hand at the bottom where it says AL Worship Center as our cash app. I'm going to put in our tithes and offering. I'm going to say prayers over that. And then we are going to jump right into the message. Amen. 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 God, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We are so grateful today to know that we can come to you with every care and concern. And so, Father, because we know we can come to you with every care and concern, we are also grateful today, Lord, to know that we can have and give into the kingdom, that we can bring our tithes and offerings and that which we have um, set aside for you, and we can put it in and we can um, look for it to be a blessing to the kingdom. So, Father, we ask that you take these things, take these finances, and that you would allow it to do what you have purposed it to do. And then we ask you to give back to those that have given, give back to those that have, even those that didn't have to give, that even in their hearts that desire, give them the blessings and the ability to plant into your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So as you can see, I know you can see my little props every now and then. I have a little bag, but today was it's a rack of clothes because the message is change your clothes, amen? Whoa, amen. Change your clothes. Um, at the beginning of the year, God began to talk about this being the year where he was coming to change some things in us, for us, and through us. However, this is the key. We got to be submitted to the process. Somebody say process. Process. And no one likes process. Uh, why? Because process can be fiery. Um, it can be difficult. And we don't always like to be stretched. We don't always like growing pains. We always don't like how it feels. So what do we do? We try to hold on to what has become comfortable with. To, we have become comfortable with. So today, I've come by way of the Holy Ghost to interrupt your comfort. Amen and ouch. Amen. I'm not going to apologize for it. In fact... Um, if you get offended by anything I say, don't get angry with me. I am simply like the UPS or the FedEx delivery person. I'm just bringing you the message. If you got an issue with the package, go in your time of quiet and ask the Lord, why did I get angry with what you said? Why did I get offended by what was said? What about it triggered something in me, which evidently means there's something there that needs to be looked at. So I'm going to tell you now, this is just my, 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 you know, my disclosure, you know, what did the little warning, at the, at the, at, you know, you get the little warning, this is my little warning, so um, I just want you to make yourself comfortable, get in here, and, and, and I'll be comfortable staying where you're comfortable that you're about to be made uncomfortable, uh, and so I'm just giving you the flight instructions, so go ahead, like take a seat belt, lock yourself in, because we're getting ready to take off, Amen. Amen. So let me give you a little background. I'm reading from Colossians, the third chapter, and I'm going to break down this chapter. And I'm reading from the message version. Can I just let me just put a little plug in right here? I know a lot of people don't like the message version, but, you know, every now and then, some scripture, you just need to go read in the message version because it is just so raw. It's just like, oh, ouch, ouch. Even, you know, you read stuff in the King James Version, it's real flowery. Even though you're being told off, it's all flowery and poetic. King, the message, it ain't flowery. It's just like jacked up. Up, you you know hey you messed up and they just say you messed up so we're reading from the message version so let me just give you a little bit of background and then I'm going to break down these scripture so one writer talking about Colossians said that they had adapted this kind of gnostic and syncretistic view of practices that were in, that were not compatible with the knowledge of God's mercy and that that Christ himself is whom all things are hidden um, and that he's the treasure and the wisdom and the knowledge. And so some of these beliefs and teaching were about human wisdom, you know, rejecting that there was a greater wisdom than human wisdom. Um, some of these teachers were di directed at discounting Jesus as a savior and the true son of God. This syncretistic view is the blending of many ideas and thoughts into one. And Paul is, is seeking to draw the people away from these deceptive practices and beliefs that were creeping into the belief systems of the people. And so 
These warnings that I'm going to read that Paul was given are, are those that are also necessary for today. We still have people that believe that wisdom and, and understanding uh, is far theirs, the human wisdom and understanding is far greater than what God is. In fact, they laugh at the thought of seeking a God to gain understanding. Proverbs 21.30 says, No human wisdom or understanding or plan can stand against the Lord. And so today there are still those who don't believe in God and would try to convince others that they are weak or helpless because they need a crutch. Psalms 1, 4, I mean 14 and 1 says, Only fools say in their heart there is no God. I'm going somewhere. Today there are still those who want to blend all things together and serve you up a smoothie version of Christianity. Um, sex outside of marriage is okay um, because you love each other. Um, living together isn't really a sin because you are committed. Lying doesn't count. It was, it was for a good reason that you told this. Like, these are all of the things, the subtle things that are seeping in and sneaking in. Um, to the belief system and the truth. Some want you to believe that God is for, go for the God of the sensation without looking for the God through the spirit. Um, there's a gift that, you know, there's this belief that the gift, you the gift, the person, run after the person with the biggest gift because that's where you want to be versus seeking the glory of God. Amen. And so on and so on. So we've created these versions of godliness, but denying the power. Amen. So this is a, this is the backdrop, if you will, to Paul's beliefs, uh, Paul's message. Um, and, and even when you, there was a message I preached not that long ago, a couple, maybe a couple of years ago, about what was the church, what has the church done with the book? And I came from um, 1 Chronicles 34. That's when they had lost the book inside the temple. Think about that. How do you lose the word of God inside the house? That means you're doing everything but going to the word. And so, uh, you know, the Lord says, no, no, it's time to put the word back where she belongs. It's time to change some stuff. When I was a kid, uh, I'm still going, so I'm just sitting in the background. When I was a kid, I, I had this red polka dot skirt suit. I thought I was too cute. It was the little flary kind. It came to my knees. It was red and had polka dots. And the shirt was mainly red, but the sleeve had polka dots. And the, and the collar had polka dots. But I put that thing on every day. <laughs> I wore it religiously. I took it off at night and put it back on in the morning. After a while, my two older sisters sat me down. Because they had got a whiff, if you will, of the fact that uh, they noticed something wasn't right. So they sat me down and said, Jewel, you cannot wear that outfit every single day. You need to change your clothes. <laughs> Come on. And I didn't understand why, because I was comfortable in that outfit. I thought I was looking cute in that outfit. So why did I need to change it? It was because it had begun to smell. Oh, oh okay. I was taking a bath every day. But the problem was I kept putting back on the same outfit. So even though I had babe, I was putting back on the same stinky clothes. And they loved me enough to look at me and say, girl, don't you go out there no more in that stinky outfit. You need to change. Because they didn't want me to look bad. They didn't want me to be in the wrong place. They didn't want me to be unaware of the fact that I was stinking. Uh, so it doesn't matter that I bathed and had been washed. Come on, somebody. Uh, it don't matter that you done bathed that been washed by the blood of somebody if you keep putting back on the same sticky clothes, if you keep putting back on the same sticky habits, if you keep putting back on what you think is cute, what you have gotten comfortable with, I just come to tell somebody today God said that this is the message to tell you to stop putting on the same sticky clothes. Oh my Because uh, he said there's a whiff. Somebody got a whiff of the stench. And we, you need to know it's time to change change your clothes. Uh, so what this is the encouragement that I want to give you today. Now I'm ready to go into the scripture. Colossians 3 verse 1 and 2. We're going to take my time and break this down. Ah, uh, Come on somebody. And I just want you to know let me just put a little pen in here. I don't know about you but you know how the Lord talks to you for a while about some things. So he's been talking to me a while about this message. I just been waiting for my turn to preach again. So here we go. Colossians 3 verse 1 and 2 from the message said, so 
If you're serious about living this new resurrected life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Amen. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorb, absorbing the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. They see things from his perspective. All right, so my first little point is change your, change your clothes of wrong behavior. So, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Let me give you a few scriptures in the Lord's head. First of all, Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. See, I heard the Holy Ghost say, you know, too many of us are saying, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. We got our special shout and jump. We got our little two-step dance. We got all our little stuff. But he said, you ain't seeking me first. Amen. He said, you ain't seeking me first. And I, I said, well, Lord, what does that mean when I'm seeking you first? You worried about your bills. You worried about your health. You worried about your money. You worried about your relationships. You worried about this. You worried about that. And you keep worrying about that. And you know what God said? You made that your God because that's what you're seeking. Oh, come on, somebody. You don't got to like it. Just say out. He said, you got everything else first but me. He said, everything else first but me. Let me just help you out right here. Let me just let me help somebody today. Seeking the Lord, following God, doing what he says to do. Nowhere in the scripture did it say it's going to be an easy job to do. Amen. Amen. He didn't say that. He said, we can do it. Why? Because we have the Holy Ghost. Huh? He said, but well, you got to act like it. He said, act like it, act like it, act like it. He said, and then he said, and then he said, you got to pursue the things which Christ presides over. What does Christ preside over? He presides over your soul. He wants to, so that means you got to pursue making sure your soul is healthy. You got to pursue the kingdom. The kingdom is not just this church building. Ah, the kingdom of the people. The kingdom is his purpose. The kingdom is his mission. He said, are you pursuing those things is that's what's first and foremost in your mind. I, I remember, I remember once when I was going through a real hard time because see we will get to some hard places and we will convince ourselves that God don't want me to go through these hard things. Oh no not me. God don't want me in this hard place. He want me to go somewhere and be, he want me to just just, just walk away from what's hard. I, I tried that with the Lord. Let me tell you what his answer was to me. I said Lord I can't be going through the thing that I was going through at the time and and fight and let you do surgery on me because I was like, Lord, I feel like I'm on the surgery table. You're trying to fix me and then you want me to fight in the spirit. You know what the Holy Ghost told me? He said, don't tell me what you can't do. He said, yep, yeah, I'm going to work on you and you got to, yeah. so he said, I got the knife cutting you and you got the knife cutting at the devil. Ah, so I want to tell somebody today, you don't get to step away from what God has called you to do because it's too hard and too heavy. Ouch and an ouch and an ouch, ouch, ouch. And in Mark 4, 19, says, And the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entered in, choked the word, and it became unfruitful. God said, this is why I need you to change your behavior. Because you say you love me. You say you live in this res a resurrected life. But you got to act like it. Because if you keep pursuing the other stuff, the enemy has a way of using that to choke out my word. And what's the word? Not just the scriptures in the Bible, but the word that I gave you to tell you what I've called you to be. If he told you you a prophet, he didn't say, oops, I made, I changed my mind. He didn't say, oh, well, I called you to be a preacher. Well, okay, maybe you don't have to be a preacher right now. I remember I had a person at the time who was my friend, said the Lord called her to preach. But she said, well, I ain't going to have to preach until my children get grown. I was like, really? Where that at? I need that scripture because he's going to give me no out. He was making me do everything at the time I didn't want to do it. But guess what? When you tell God that you're going to work on your, on your timeline, you know what happens? You miss it. Because her kids are grown and she missed it. And her life is miserable. See, I'm going to tell you something. You better do what God says do for even now. I don't care how hard it is. 1 Corinthians 2, 16 says, For thou know the mind of the Lord, that he instructs him. I'm sorry, for who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. God said, look, you can pursue what I say pursue because you put on my mind. You understand. You think, let me think through you. Let me love through you. Let me do the things of God through you. 
so that you can see farther than what is right in front of you. Because what he said, he said, stop shuffling along. I can think shuffling. That means you ain't picking your feet up. You just scooching. You just got kind of scooting along, sliding your feet. And, and he said, but guess what you're doing? You're doing this. Like a chicken plucking on the ground. He said, so all you see is the crumbs that the enemy done threw in your feet. Versus look up and be alert so you can see the bounty and the fullness of what God got for you. Amen. Amen. Woo, somebody say amen. amen. Colossians 3, 3 and 4 says, your old life is dead. Your new life, which is your real life, even though invisible to spectators, is with Christ in God. He is your life. When Christ, your real life, remember, shows up again on this earth, you'll show up to the real you, the glorious you. Meanwhile, be content with obscurity like Christ. Ah, God said for this one, change your ill-fitted clothes. Ah, ah, you know, how many of you have this thing where you got something cute, you bought it, you like, oh, I really like this shirt. You get it home, it don't fit. But you, for some reason, you're going to figure out how to smash yourself in that t-shirt. You're going to figure out how to squeeze yourself in that skirt because it was so cute. And you just, you know you need to go on and take it back because it don't fit. But you're going to hang it in your closet because you got this hope and prayer that someday you're going to squeeze into it. Uh, God said it's time to change the ill-fitted clothes. Uh, those old things, those old dead things. That He said, because I gave you a new life and it's a real life. It's your, let's look at that for me. It's your real life. Meaning the stuff you currently see is not all that God has for you. He has taken us somewhere. And he said, even though it's invisible to the spectators, guess what? Spectators are those that are just watching. They're not involved in the activity. Why are you letting spectators tell you that you need to be who you used to be when God is telling you that's not who I called you to be? The spectators ain't even doing no work. Spectators, because you know, I, I, I'm amazed. I'm not a sports fan, but I'm always amazed when I listen to people watching the sports, the spectators, the spectators watching the sport, and they have determined they're better than the coach. They have determined that they're better than the players, and they they will start to say, oh, he shouldn't have made that move. He shouldn't have made this move or that move. And, and in my thinking, I'm often looking at the person saying, you can't make no move. So why are you worried about what move they did make? You ain't making no move. So you need to shut up. And guess what's happening to those that are playing the sports? Uh, the spectators are talking. They still getting paid. They still bouncing the ball. They still throwing, going for their layups or whatever you call them. They still do whatever they gonna do the way they gonna do it because they're the ones getting paid to do the job. Come on, somebody. You better stop throwing away your pay. You better stop throwing away your blessings that God got for you because you sitting there listening to the spectators. Amen. Change your ill-fitting clothes. And then I like to see be content with obscurity. Let me tell you why I highlighted that one. God said too many times, my children, I, you supposed to be letting go of your old self. Part of your old self was that false trinity of me, myself, and I. That putting myself of a greater importance than necessary for the time and the occasion. And God said many of my children, what they are doing, they ain't content with me working on them in the background. They ain't content with me having to go having to go into the shell. They ain't content with going in the cave. They ain't content with me having to deal with whatever's going on in them in private. So what are they doing? They making their own platform. So somebody told you was a prophet today, you done went out and got your shingle, your, your, your cards, and you done got you a cash app, and now you ready to go prophesy the nation. How about you go get an English lesson and learn how to write a good sentence first? I said what I said. Because some of them I be looking at what they write, and I'm like, I don't know why nobody ain't mad at you. I need an interpreter to understand the sentence you just wrote. How about doing first things first? God is trying to change you. Let him change you. Amen. Because the reason why you need to prove yourself is because you letting the spectators tell you you ain't who God said you are. Don't worry about what the spectators say. What did God say? And if he said that's who you are, you keep letting him work on you until he ready to release you. Amen. Change your clothes. Change your clothes. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Colossians 3, 5, and 8. I don't know about y'all, but whoo, this thing feel good to me. Colossians 3, 5, and 8. And it says, and that means... 
killing off everything content with the way of death, sexual promiscuity, impurity, lust, doing whatever you feel like, whatever you feel like, it. Amen. and grabbing whatever tracks your fancy. That's a life shaped by things and feelings instead of by God. Let me say that again. That's a life shaped by things and feelings instead of by God. It is because of this kind of thing that God is about to explode in anger. I didn't write that. That's just in the scripture. Let me read that again for the people in the back that maybe y'all didn't hear that. It says, the life shaped by things and feelings instead of by God. It's because of this kind of thing that God is about to explode in anger. It wasn't long ago that you were doing all that stuff and not knowing any better. But now you know better. So make sure it's all going for good. Bad temper, irritability, meanness, profanity, and dirty language, dirty talk. God said, change your outdated clothes. Come on, somebody. He said, I have told you that this, this, this old way, you got to kill it. He didn't say, I'm going to kill it. That you got to kill it. You and I got to make a decision. I'm dying to what I used to be. I'm dying to how I used to respond. I'm dying to those things that God said are not like him. And I would be the first one to raise my hand when he said that the, the life shaped by things and feeling instead of God. We can get in our feelings real bad. Oh, Lord Jesus. Uh, we be hooked on the feeling. We be like, Lord, okay. Uh, Lord, it feel like you not hearing me. Lord, it feel like you not talking to me. Lord, it feels this way and that way. He said, but is that what I said? Amen. Is that what I said? Look, 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 look. Let me go back to that very first one. What did he say? He said, this is an invisible life. It's, it's, you don't see it yet. This is your real life. Your real life is who you are in God, even though it's not manifested. I, the way, and I put this on a post yesterday. This is the way the Lord said. He said, you got your natural and you got your spiritual life. Your natural is what you see right now. I see Marcy. I see Jocelyn. I see Pastor James. I, I see y'all. That's my natural. So guess what the enemy tries to do to my natural? He tries to say, girl, you preaching to an empty church. Uh, he said, you preaching to an empty church. Ain't nobody here. Ain't nobody listening. But my supernatural, hey, God, my, son, my spiritual eyes say them chairs are full. Huh? And they're not just full with people. But the Holy Ghost is up in here. It's crowded in this here house. Huh? Ah, the Holy Ghost is in here. It's, we are in full effect. We can't even move. We rubbing elbows. It's so tight up in here. That's what my supernatural spiritual life is. So guess what? From time to time. Supernatural. The natural says, oh, no, no, look, look, see, feel. But the spirit says, no, don't look, don't feel, acknowledge what, understand what I've already seen. Amen. I ain't changed my mind about what I said. I'm not changed my mind. He says, so get rid of the outdated clothes. In this case, the outdated clothes is I'm believing or we believing just because it happened this way 900 times that the 901 times. It's got to happen the same. God said, no, 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 no. He told me that even when I was getting ready to uh, fly. Because I was always like, oh, Lord, I always get sick when I fly. He said, stop saying that because you have decreed over yourself what you expect to happen. He said, you go and say, no, I'm going somewhere. I'm going to get where I'm supposed to get. Because I don't care if it happened every time before. It ain't got to happen this time. Amen. And it didn't happen this time. Change your outdated clothes. I remember when I was first, God instructed me to get in shape. <laughs> oh, Jesus. When I first lost all that weight. One of the things the Lord told me to do, he said, you'll get rid of all of the clothes that are not your current size. I was like, hmm? Because, Lord, there was some cute stuff in my closet. They was, you know, way bigger than what I was at the time when he told it to me. But you know how... Now, look, I ain't going to put nobody on blast. How many women got three or four different size wardrobes in their closet? Okay. So, I know I wasn't the only one. But the Lord said, Jewel, get rid of everything that's not your current size. And I said, well, why? He said, because what you will do, you will give yourself permission to go and fit back in the old clothes. He said, but that's outdated. That's not who you are anymore. He said, get rid of them. Because then when you get rid of them, what you currently in becomes 
your accountability. Because then if it starts getting tight, you can't subconsciously say, oh, well, this skirt tight today. I work on working out, but I'm going to put on this other skirt because I know I got a little room. So guess what you start to do? That one is roomy. And then you you get, you next thing you know, you don't want them two, three sides because you don't got comfortable going back into the things that's outdated. Amen. God said, no, 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 we got to kill that. Kill that. Kill that. I don't, it don't matter. I don't care how cute it was. Give it to somebody else and let it be cute on them. He said, but right now I need you to let go. I need you to change out of the old outdated stuff. Guess what else happens? You know, like this rack of clothes that I got here, right? And, and I, I can't, none of this, I can't fit. This ain't, I can't fit none of this stuff. So you know what it's doing? It's taking up space. God said, when you hold it on the stuff, that is outdated. It's just taking up room. Do you know it's some stuff in your soul taking up room? It's some stuff that is rooted in your soul that is taking up room. That's supposed to be with love precise, but you got rejection and fear and doubt. Ah, but that stuff is taking up room. God said it's outdated and it got to go, got to go, got to go. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! He said he want everything in the current. You got to wear your current size clothes. Because guess what? When he changed you to be a little smaller in the spirit, because you know what? He, he slims us. He, he, oh, that's oh God, I wish this happened in the natural. But when the Lord puts stuff in you, it slims you out. It, you become full about the spirit, but it slims you out because it ain't no room for nothing else. So it's getting rid of all of the stuff and the junk of God. I, I sure wish that wasn't a natural. Then I could get full and skinny at the same time. Ooh, that would just be so lovely. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Colossians 3, 9 and 11. Don't lie to one another. You done, you're done with that old life. It's like a filthy set of ill-fitting clothing you stripped off and put in the fire. Now you're dressed in a new wardrobe. Every item of your new way of life is custom made by the creator with his label on it. Come on, Jesus. I wear label, label made uh, uh, items in my life. All the old fashions are now obsolete. Words like Jewish and non-Jewish, religious and irreligious, insider and outsider, uncivilized, uncool, slay and free mean nothing. From now on, everyone is defined by Christ. Everyone is included in Christ. I, I, God said change the ill-fitted for the custom fit. I, I, don't you know? See, it's one thing. I can go pull something off the rack and it can fit me okay. But when I go to a tailor or when I go to somebody that's an artist that creates an outfit, it don't just fit. I mean, it fits. It is fitted to me because guess what? You can come and try to put it on. It ain't going to get no give for you. Or, or in the places where it fit me, it may not fit you. Uh, in the places where your outfit fits you, it may not fit me. Why? Because I'm trying to squeeze into somebody else's clothing. Uh, God said it's time for you to burn. So he said, don't just get rid of your old clothes. It's time for some of y'all to have a bonfire. Uh, uh, it's time for a bonfire. It's time for a bonfire. It's time to lay that stuff down and play, play, apply the Holy Ghost fire to it so that stuff can burn up or off of you. Get up, get out, and move on. Guess what? Because if it's ashes, you can't put it back on. Why? Because it's been burned up by the fire. Ugh. God has been burned up by the fire. I, oh, oh. Woo, Jesus. It's been burned up by the fire. It's been burned up by the fire. I, you know, I just want to say this right here. This is a time where we need to say, Lord, I know some are celebrating that this is uh, Pentecost Sunday. I, I read that somewhere, whether I misread it or not. As far as I'm concerned, every Sunday you need to be asking for the fire to fall fresh and new. Every Sunday you need to say, Lord, burn off of me whatever don't belong in me. Burn up old behaviors. Burn up old thought processes. Burn up, burn up, burn up by the fire. By the fire, Lord God. Release your fire over me today. Father, so my behavior and attitudes and things change. I no longer want to wear the old clothes that I used to wear. Amen. You said you got a custom-made outfit for me. So guess what? I ain't gonna be the same kind of prophet you will be. I ain't gonna be the same kind of apostle you will be. You won't be the same kind of teacher somebody else will be. You won't be the same kind of intercessor that somebody else will be. So stop letting the enemy tell you or the spectators tell you, oh, you ain't all that good because you ain't like 
Apostle ABC. Right. You ain't all that because you ain't like prophet of the most high. I got my own title going on. Uh, you ain't like this person. You ain't like that person. You better rejoice and say, that's right. I'm a designer original. Hey, I'm a designer original. God took time to fashion me so that I look like him. I look like his son. And I know it because he labeled me. Now, he put his seal on me. See, this ain't no counterfeit. You know, some of us can't tell counterfeit because, you know, them little purses that folks be walking around with. Now, those that know the purse or know the designers, they know when it's a knockoff because they're like, oh, no, it don't got this special symbol. It don't got this special thread. Why? Because they know their purse. They know their designers. See, when you know the designer, uh, the most high God, uh, you can tell when something to counterfeit. You be like, yeah, something ain't all. You might speak right. You might even be prophesying words that sound right, but some ain't right. I don't feel that the label is there. Huh? Either the seal that this comes from the true God. He said, old fashioned is now obsolete. Take it off. Time to change your clothes. Take it off. Colossians 3, 12 and 14 says, so chosen by God for this new life of love, Dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline. Be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive and offense. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic, all-purpose garment. Never be without it. How God said, change the self-serving garment for the garment of love. He said, one thing about this, this, this wardrobe that I picked out for you, he said, one of the main pieces is love. You know, for women that, 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 you know, you get that cute dress and it fits just right, but you know you be seeing that extra roll here and that extra roll there. You got to go get that, that necessary all-purpose spank or all-purpose girdle so when you put it on, ain't no wrinkles, ain't no lines, you ain't got no extra bands when you don't want no extra bands, so your dress, your outfit is smooth and it's like, oh girl, you look like you lost 10 pounds. Yeah, because I got the all-purpose garment that's holding me all in place. God said that is how love is. God, love, because the scriptures say love will cover a multitude of sin. I, don't you know love, when you're walking in your garment of love, not only will you forgive others, but it have a way of making you be straightened out. I love have a way of straightening you out. I thank you, Jesus. He said, wear love. It's your basic, all-purpose garment. God said, it's time to come out of the self-serving garment. Everything ain't about you. I had time somebody say, well, they talking about me. Girl, they, they ain't setting you. Half of the people you think talking about you don't even know you exist. Duh. So get your own self off your mind. Stop worrying about, okay, did they, are they, is, that, is that about me? They wrote that post. Is that post about me? If it is, so what? Look at it this way. I, I heard somebody say, you know, even if they talking about you, that means you got something you worth talking about. You better just keep it moving, because I'm like this. You can be as subtle as you want to. I ain't subtle. Unless you call my name out, I'm going to keep it moving, because guess what? When you call my name out, then it's on, oh, girl. I mean, you know, okay, no, I ain't going to take my earrings. But it'll be on, and it's like, okay, we got something to talk about, because at least you was woman or man enough to not be trying to hide behind a pose. At least you're going to say something. But you ain't going to say nothing. That's all right. That's all right. You just keep on loving anyway. They's talking about you. You keep on loving anyway. Cause guess what? You can love your enemy to a place where they don't. They the, the, the Lord will start to bring conviction. Cause guess what? You ain't really giving them nothing to fuel why they mad at you in the first place. Change your self-serving garment. Colossians three fifteen and seventeen says this. Oh Jesus. Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing and cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Okay, come on somebody. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense and sing. Sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail in your lives, words, action, whatever be done in the name of the master, Jesus, thanking God the Father every step of the way. Ha, change your clothes. Put on the garment of unity. God said it's time for my children to stop pitting one another against each other. 
together. He said, keep in tune. Uh, it's like I almost can see you marching. Hey, we marching in tune. I ain't marching sideways, got this kind of walk. You marching this way and somebody else doing this. We like, what, what, what? we ain't in unity. Let's march in the way. Let's get in tune in step and do what God has come. He said, none of this going off doing your own thing. Well, I don't like the way they making me have to be taught. So I'm just going to do my own thing. That's why we got all these rogue prophets out on Facebook. Yes, I said it. I, I look at these folks and I'm like, okay, who y'all under? Nobody. They ain't nobody holding them accountable. Well, I just, I don't like the, I don't like the hypocrisy of the house. So I'm not going to go into that church. Will you be a hypocrite? Because if you read your Bible, all of the prophets were attached to the house. They was a house they was attached to. They was attached to the temple. They were attached to the people. How are you going to detach yourself from God and say you're speaking for God? Yeah, I said what I said and I ain't taking it back. He said, none of this going off doing your own thing. Get yourself in order. That's old clothes. Take them off. Put yourself in a garment of unity. Yeah, I know some churches hurt you. Well, you find, you, you keep asking the Lord to show you one. Because let me just help you out. Let me help you. Let me help you right here. There is no such thing as a perfect church. Why? Because there's no perfect people. I, I remember my pastor once told me, he said, even if this church was perfect, as soon as you came in, it was no longer perfect because you ain't perfect. So as soon as you walked in the house, your imperfections go in the house with you. Hello. But what we do, we still learn how to take these broken people, these misfit people, and make them kingdom fit. So stop giving yourself an excuse to be at home, sitting on your couch, prophesying to folks, and telling them about how they ain't doing right, and you ain't doing right. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Let's keep it moving. Thank you, Lord. All right, Colossians. Okay, did I do that one? Yes, I did. My page. It got stuck. Mm-hmm. Okay, I put it backwards. I'm like, where is that? Okay. Colossians 3, 18 to 25. We're getting, we getting to the end. All right. Wives, understand and support your husbands by submitting to them in ways that honor the masters. Husbands, go all out in love for your wives. Don't take advantage of them. Children, do what your parents tell you. This delights the masters. This delights the master no end. Parents, don't come down too hard on your children or you'll crush their spirits. Servants, do what you're told by your earthly master. And don't just do the minimum that will get you by. Let me say that again. And don't just do the minimum that will get you by. Do your best. Amen. Work from the hearts for your real master, for God, confident that you'll get paid in full when you come into your inheritance. Keep in mind always that the ultimate master you're serving is Christ. Hello. The sullen servant who does shoddy work will be held responsible. Being and follow Jesus doesn't cover up bad work. Ouch and a double ouch. Huh? The Lord said change your clothes and put on the garment of honor. Let me just say this because I, I, I have pastor friends and we talk and it's just always quite interesting to me how people will make this stand like they're helping the pastor out. Oh, I'm going a, I'm to a serve because I'm helping you out. And, but guess what? When you're tired of helping me out or you're tired of helping your pastor out, you confident and, come, and it's easy for you to say, I no longer want to help out because you was helping me out. Uh-uh. Let me help somebody right now. It says your real master, God, if you and I are not walking in the assignment that God gave us, I don't know what you're doing. You're wasting time. I ain't giving you the assignment. God did. I didn't, I didn't call you a prophet. God did. I didn't call you a pastor. God did. I, your pastor didn't call you. He, uh, he or she might have acknowledged that that was your calling, but they're not the one that called you. God called you. So we need to stop saying, well, I don't want to be called no more. Or at least if you're going to say it, say the truth. Don't come to your pastor saying, oh, I no longer want to do that work. You need to go to God and say, God, I don't want your calling. You know what? Y'all ain't going to go do that because that's a lot different. It's easier to quit on your church, but it's a lot harder for you to say I'm quitting on God. But tell the truth because that's what you're doing. You telling God I ain't going to do this no more. He said put on the garment of honor. And I'm not talking about honoring the man or the woman in the house. I'm talking about honoring your commitment. If you told God you was going to do a thing, do it. Because I promise you, it's, it gets hard. I 
ain't gonna tell you it don't get easy. I don't know why people think, well, Julie, you've been a pastor because you love being a pastor. <laughs> can y'all, can, 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 if the camera could come real close, <laughs> I would give you this face, like, what? No, I ain't no pastor because I love being no pastor. I'm gonna tell you the truth. I remember a dear friend of mine, she's deceased now, Dolores Jackson. I know, what's the, Jenkins. Dolores Jenkins, I don't know why I changed her name. But Dolores, she came to me one Sunday at church. She stood there and looked at me for a few minutes. And she said, Jewel, you're supposed to be a pastor. I gave her the side eye. She said, no, really. Um, what do you think about being a pastor? I said, I don't think about being a pastor. She said, well, why do you want to be a pastor? I said, I don't like people. She said, Jewel, I said, okay, I like people. But I'm going to tell you, I don't like the fickleness of people. I don't like when people are wishy-washy. I don't like when you up today, down tomorrow, yes, no, flip-flop. I don't like all that. I don't want to be no pastor. So, there you go. I ain't trying to be no pastor. And then the Lord said, Joel, I want you to pass. I was like, ha ha, got you. Got some jokes. You funny. But guess what I couldn't do? I couldn't quit because he didn't. I didn't call myself. That's what I'm trying to help y'all understand. Amen. You may be called to stuff you don't want to do. Amen. I remember when, when we were doing a spiritual gift test to my oldest daughter and she got some, some stuff. She actually just had a full tantrum. She got on the floor, rolled around. She was like, ah! I was like, uh, Jocelyn, it is what it is. That's what God called you to be. And guess what? She walk in and what God called her to be. Amen. We don't get to choose. He said, I need for you to understand. I, I, I don't want no shoddy work. I don't want no half-hearted work. He said, don't do the minimum ticket you're going to get back. He said, and, and calling yourself a follower of Christ, don't cover up that you're not doing your work. I don't know about nobody else. I feel like you can get spanked. That's a spanking right there. Because many of us go, well, I love the Lord. That's enough. But I won't go to church. I won't commit to, to being a part of what God has told me to commit to. I ain't doing none of that stuff. Why? Because I just, I, I don't feel led. I'm, what did I say earlier? He said, this is not about being feelings. This is about what God said. He said, I don't care what you feel. You might, not love, you might not be feeling that pastor, but if that's the church I told you to go to, you better get your little hind parts in there and get in a seat. Amen. See, this, we done got too much into this. I can do what I feel like doing. I, I, I had a friend that, one of my Facebook friends, she was looking for a church. She's like, y'all, what church should I go to? And everybody was giving all these beautiful names. And I jumped on there. I said, well, let me, let me help you out with some other folks, too. How about you pray and ask God where he wants you to go? Because, see, I can go over here to the big house, or I go over there to the little house. I go where I think, because most of the time we're looking for a place where we can go sit and be comfortable. I said this, and I've said it before. We are not saved to sit. We are saved to serve. It's time for us to get out of the sit ministry, because there's too many of y'all sitting on your gifts, and because you're sitting on your gifts, other people are having to do your work. I'm tired of doing everybody else's work. You got to do your own work. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I said what I said. Look, God is saying it's you got you and I just like I got work to do. Pastor Marcy got work to do. Everybody in the house got work to do. And it's not a sit ministry. If you find in the Bible the sit ministry page, please take me to it. Because I want to be able to take that to God and say, God, I got too much work over here. I should be able to go to the sit ministry because there's a lot of folks sitting in their houses, in their places. And they're happy to go and to just get fed and go back home. God says, no. Change your clothes. Put on honor. Put on the garment of honor to honor his word, honor what he put in you because he's trying to bring something out of you. He said, I want, to, do, want you to do real work to the real master. The honor goes to God. You're not doing for me. You're not doing for your pastor. You're not even doing for yourself. You're doing it all for God. Because I promise you, when folks was like, well, you like pastor, I was like, if I went on feelings, we would have left this building. We have left the building. Houston, we have left the building. We would have been long gone because I haven't always felt like it. No, I'm just being transparent. There were Sundays I said, Lord, I can't do this no more. There were Sundays when I'm like, Lord, this thing is too hard to carry. Can I quit? He said, nope. 
You ain't a quitter. I've told y'all before, I've tried to sign my own pink slip. I've tried to fire my own self. I send it to the Lord and say, Lord, fire me, please, because I'm not worthy of the position. Find somebody that got a little more something, something that can do this. And he would send it back with a stamp. Denied. I said, no, go on, Lord. Could you stop denying me? Could you just let me quit? He said, no, because you have not fulfilled yet what I'm bringing through you. You're going on your feelings, but Jewel, I've got a great plan that I'm going to bring through your life. Stay the course, daughter. I'm coming to tell somebody, stay the course, stay the course, stay the course. It don't feel good. You know, they don't respect you. They don't honor you. They treat you like this or that, but stay the course. Yeah. Stay the course. Stay the course. Stay the course. Because you ain't do it for them no way. You did it for God. Amen. Everything you do, you do it for the Lord. You do it for the Lord. It don't matter what they say. It don't matter what they talk about. I've talked to some pastor friends. Soon as they try to correct somebody, and all of a sudden they're Jezebel. All right, you better stop talking about God's men and women because they're trying to help you out. They're trying to help you. They're trying to help you. But because you continue stay in your feelings and your place you reject it oh but that's all right my word says you better listen to the prophet because your life will prosper oh you better stop re rejecting the word that the lord done sent to you to help you get in shape amen you better receive it and move forward in the name of jesus he said being a father of jesus doesn't cover up bad work he said i am coming with an expectation of seeing my people do what i called them to do and then finally, hey, he said, put on your praise and clothes. 2 Samuel 6, 14 said, and David danced before the Lord with all his might, wearing a priestly garment. God said, look at here. I've got some expectation that you put your praise on. Praise me even when you don't feel like it. Praise me when it don't feel good. Praise me when you don't feel like the answer coming. Praise me when you're tired. Praise me when you woke. Praise me, praise me, praise me. Praise me, praise me, praise me. Praise me, praise me praise me. It ain't about feeling it. Ah, he said it's about knowing. If you know that you know me, praise me. If you know that I'm God, praise me. Praise me, praise me, praise me. Amen. And oh, don't let me forget this thing. You know, he said, Junior, you forgot something. He said, husband and wives. God said, it's time out for the discord in your house. He said, it's time out for y'all to stop fighting one another. He said, don't you know the enemy is fighting y'all? That y'all fighting each other so you not fighting him. Oh, come on, somebody. He said, you mad at her and she mad at you and y'all fight. And this is the thing. It's like I can hear conversation. Y'all fighting about who is more important in the kingdom. Y'all fighting about what well, God told me this. Well, God didn't tell you this. Well, God said this. Well, no, God said that. Y'all fighting about God's stuff. And so both of y'all are correct. The fact that y'all fighting about it, both of y'all are wrong. Hello. And God said the enemy has using these battles in your life about who you are and what you are. And he's using that to bring discord. And y'all are walking right into it. Amen. He said, that's how he said, that is one of the ways that the enemy is trying to tear up the house of the people of God. The marriages. He's trying to get y'all jealous of each other's gifts or fighting about one another. You ain't honoring him. He ain't, ain't supporting you. And so you got this fight. But my word says, um, hello. It says, husbands, you are to love your wife. Go all, it says, go all out in love. I don't care if she just worked your nerve real bad, but you just go all out in love. My husband, he do that so well, because sometimes I be telling him, I was like, I done got on my own nerve, but guess what? I done got on my own nerve, but he don't never act like I get on his nerve. He probably do that in secret, but I never see that I get on his nerve. Only time you can tell when you get on his nerve is when he do this little tight lip thing. He would do his little lips tight. But he holding himself back. Guess what? Because I know I'm a handful. But he said he can handle a handful. Because he learned, he learned how to love me. And, and, and then guess what? Because he loved me the way he do, it's times when I know I was wrong, I have to go back and say, baby, I'm sorry. You know, I was yelling at you. You ain't had nothing to do. This other stuff had just ticked me off. And you just kind of was the fallout of it. He's like, okay, I knew. He said, I knew. 
But you know what he do? He going to pray for me. He starts praying for me versus him then allowing my trigger to trigger him. Amen. And then it says, wives submit in a way that's honor, but you honoring God. So guess what? You know, some of y'all, I don't know why I'm going this way, but I'm going to say it. God says some of y'all that's in the church and y'all husband's not in church. He said the reason why he won't come to the church because you honor, you honoring your pastor more than you honoring him at home. Hello. Hello. And no, no man, ain't no man trying to compete with no other man for you. I don't care if it is pastor. Don't come in there and tell them, pastor said this, pastor said that, pastor said this. Pastor said that, and his head he going, and you going to sound like wah, 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 that little Charlie Brown character, because he done turned you off. So God said, look, you better make sure that you honor honoring and loving each other. That's the garment of honor. Honor your marriage. Honor your commitment to each other. Amen. Honor the fact that y'all said, till death do you part, not till I kill you and you kill me. Right. Amen. He said, till death do we part. We, we made a commitment, a covenant before God. Yeah, I don't care where you got married at, but it was you, your spouse, and God in that conversation. And y'all committed to him that you were going to honor him and honor each other. So do it. Amen. Do it. And then this, 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 this other thing it says about servants, do what you're told by your earthly master. God said, um, your job. Your commitment to your church, whatever you are committed to, serve it well. Amen. You ain't gonna you 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 don't expect to half go to work and get a full check. Hello. Facts. You ain't gonna be like, okay, I don't feel because that's what we are saying a minute. We might not feel like going to work. We might can hate our bosses to the to the bottom of our very being, but we gonna get up put our clothes on and we're going to show up and that same boss we hate with our whole heart we go hi how are you good morning thank you so much they let them give you a bonus <laughs> we're going to be excited god said i need you to be just that happy with my house amen don't 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 half get up don't be like oh i'm tired today uh he wasn't too jesus wasn't too tired to go to the cross for you hello amen he said this is a time out for excuses it's time out for excuses. I get it. I'm not saying that. Please don't hear me as saying you can't take off because you take off on your job for emergency. I'm not saying you can't take off. I'm not saying you, there's reasons why you may not be in the house. But God said don't make that your way of being. Amen. Everything is an excuse. I broke my toe today. Ooh. I don't think I can walk too good. But let, 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 let after 1 o'clock, all of a sudden, you got a healing on that toe. You tap dance and you don't forget you didn't hit the toe. Because the enemy will, he will see that that works and he will always give you an excuse. Last two things. Wash your clothes. Wash your clothes. Exodus 19, 14 says, so Moses went down to the people. He consecrated them for worship and they washed their clothes. God said, even when I change your clothes, remember that you still got to wash them. Now, even if you're in the right garment, you need to wash. You need to come before the Lord consistently and say, wash me, refresh me. I need to be made new. I need you to do in me a new thing. And then finally, the clothes God provides for you never wears out. Deuteronomy 29 and 5. For 40 years, I led you through the wilderness, yet your clothes and sandals did not wear out. God said, what I put on you is permanent. What I put on you is everlasting. Uh, when you put it on, it's going to wear out. The natural garments, they're going to wear out. Uh, they're going to start to fade. Some of these things are faded. They're going to start to fade. He said, but my glory don't fade. When I put it on you, it don't it don't um, disappear. It ain't going to be, it's don't, it don't diminish. It stays true 100% of the time. If it's a diminishing, it's you, not him. Uh, so Father, we say thank you to Day. Uh, Lord, we come, we say, we ask that this word will have touched some hearts today. Uh, Father, even if it made us uh, have to think a little bit, even if it felt a little hot in some of the places, Father, we're asking right now that you help us to hear from you. What do we need to change? Amen. What things in our life do we need to change? Do we need to change our attitude? Do we need to change our behavior? What needs to be different? Uh, you want to change us because there's a greater that you're trying to take us to. There's more that you're trying to bring out of us. You have made garments just for us. You have tailor-made what you want us to be. You have tailor-made what
what you have called for us to be. I don't have to look like a copycat. We are not copycat. We are originals. Help us walk in the original anointing of our life. Help us to walk in the original promises of our lives. Help us to move and do what you called us to do. Now, I pray for those that are listening. Even right now, Father, I pray for households that's represented on the live and even those in the building. I pray, Father, that you would help us to be and live in unity. Unity with our children. Unity with our spouses. Let us put on the clothes of unity. So when people walk in our house, they'll be coming in and it's a house of Bethel. It's a house of peace. It's a house of praise. It's a house of worship. They will come in and feel the anointing. Why? Because we are in unity inside of the building. We are in unity inside of the house. Uh, we no longer let the enemy pit us one against the other, but we come, even as our family, we call ourselves Team Williams. Father, let the, uh, the family begin to call themselves a team, that they are together, that they're not letting somebody else come in and tear their team member down. They're not letting somebody else come in and take their team member out. They're going to fight for their team member. They're going to walk with their team member. They're going to encourage their team member. They're going to make Make sure that everybody goes in. They're going to pray for the wayward child. They're going to pray for the lost spouse. Why as a team? Because they want to go in as a team, as a team. They want unity in their houses. Father, we ask that you allow your spirit to fall afresh and anew on us. Oh God, do a new thing in us. Give us a refreshing that we need. There's some of your children that have been going through. They're thirsty. I speak to those dry places right now and I call down the rain of heaven on you. May you feel the rain release. Oh God, release the rain. 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 God, let it be refreshing right now. Refresh the weary God refresh the weary soul. I feel it right now. I feel a breaking coming for somebody. You've been saying, Lord, I need it. I need it. I need it. Break right now. Break, 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 break. In the name of Jesus. Let the refreshing come in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ah, sick. Ah, sick. Lord, let the refreshing come. A fresh wind. Ah, hit them right where they are. No more hurriedness. No more distractions. No more things to try to fill the void. Change your clothes. Let God cover you. Let him put on the new garment. I hear him say, I'm putting on some of you a garment of praise. I'm moving the sorrow. And I'm putting on new garments over you right now. God, we say thank you. God, we come against fear right now in the name of Jesus. God said, too many of you are holding on to your fear garment. And if I could tell you visually what fear looks like. Uh, fear is like, I see you in like a dark jacket that's ripped and torn. And it almost looks like it's got bugs on it and creepy crawlies on it. Uh, he said, because that's what fear does. It tries to keep biting at you. It tries to keep eating at you. It tries to get in and infect you so that you won't trust. Uh, but I speak to that coat and clothing of fear today and I burn it up in the spirit. I burn it up with the power of God. I burn it up. I burn it up. God burn it up in the name of Jesus. Remove fear. Because it's keeping many of you from walking in who God has called you to be. So you're tormented. One day you, yes, I'm of this. And then the next day, no, I'm not of this. It's too hard. It's too hard. It's too hard. And then you draw back. God said no more drawing back. Press in and press past. Press past. Press past. The fear and the doubt. Amen. So Lord God, remove that fear and, and put them in a garment of righteousness. Amen. Put on the garment of righteousness which protects you and helps 
instructs you to see things rightly and to divide things rightly so that you know what God has called you to do. God, we come against everything that would try to hinder the soul. It's like I see even some with jackets, and the jackets look like they got on metal pieces, nails in it. God said, that's the prickliness, that's the anger. Ah, I come against that spirit of anger, that garment of anger that pricks at you, and it pokes at you. Why? So that you can get angry and angrier and angry. And every time that jacket hits you, those nails pierce you and make you angrier. Ah, I come against it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, remove anger, bitterness, and Father, replace it with a garment of love. Woo. So that we can walk in who you have called for us to be. Father, we give you praise. We say thank you. Today we declare our clothes are changed. Amen. And we will no longer be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now my brothers and sisters, don't just take this word and say, oh that was an interesting message or a good message. Go back and meditate on it and ask God what you need to change. Amen. What is he trying to do? What, needs to you, what do you need to let go of so you can walk in the fullness? Because I hear him say it's time. God bless you.